Hello Pro ITNs. I hope you guys are doing good and learning at the right pace. Yeah. Till now we have looked on virtualization technologies. We talked a bit on monolithic architecture as well as microservice architecture, right? Um, we, we did the comparison between the two and now today we are going to start with another chapter in microservice that is Docker. So uh, today what we are going to discuss is about the uh, Docker technologies of course and we are going to compare uh, the technology between virtualization and Docker. We are going to see the trends between the Docker and virtualization technologies and then we are going to look at how we are going to create account in Docker. So remember guys, Docker is also a, I mean, enhanced version of virtualization. It's, it's actually, um, the advantage of using Docker is it is very lightweight. Yeah? Uh, we have seen in the earlier lectures that when we installed Windows and Linux on a virtualization, we saw how much time it took, right? Now, uh, going forward, we, we are going to look at how much time it is going to take when we have to uh, run a Java application, a running Java or Python application on Docker. Minutes. Yeah, that's, that's the power of Docker. How? Because Docker doesn't uh, actually utilize the entire image. Uh, it, it is only having binaries and libraries that are required only for that particular specific component. And that's the reason it is lightweight. Yeah? As compared to virtualization, virtualiza virtualization installs the entire operating system and on that you have to install the applications and on that you have to configure various modules. But Docker, that's the advantage. Okay. So uh, I'm looking forward and uh, we will uh, see how the things will flow in today. Welcome back to ITNs. So let's start with what is Docker. So Docker is a set of platform as a service product that uses OS level virtualization to deliver software in packages called containers. Containers are isolated from one another and bundle their own software, libraries and configuration file. A container is a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. A Docker container image is a lightweight, standalone, executable package of software that includes everything needed to run an application, code, runtime, system tools, system binaries and settings. So let's see, uh, let's do a comparison of virtual machines and containers. Yeah? So as you know, I mean, the virtual machines, they, it's sitting on a uh, top of a hardware and on top of that hardware is the host operating system. Uh, it could be Windows or it could be Linux, it doesn't matter. And on that, you, on top of that operating system is a hypervisor layer, right? Now this, this is the main uh, base for any virtual uh, machines to be built on, right? So you have a server, uh, which is a hardware consisting of CPU, RAM, network, hard disk, right? And then uh, on the, that you install an operating system and on that you configure hypervisor, yeah? Then you can actually go ahead and configure virtual machines, so you can have a virtual machine one which, which will have its own operating system its own apis its own libraries yeah and then you can have multiple virtual machines like vm1 vm2 uh, vm1 could be linux vm2 could be windows vm3 could be any other operating system yeah all these three virtual machines will be sitting isolated on top of a single hardware yeah right but as you can see in this image 
all these virtual machines will have its own guest operating system right now let's look at how it is in containers environment yeah so when we are talking about containers so docker is one of the container right so we have this server layer or the hardware layer and on top of it we have an operating system layer uh, which is your host operating system uh, windows or linux and then on top of it your we have your container software for uh, for our uh, example we'll take it as docker now on top of it you are building up containers container 1 container 2 container 3 container n right so in here in this uh, containers you don't see any guest operating system right you just see binaries and libraries and you have an application 1 application uh, 2 and uh, same with container 2 uh, you can have multiple applications inside a container and with container 3 I mean you can build multiple containers on the same hardware yeah the advantage out here is it's lightweight why because it doesn't have any guest operating system right it's it only has binaries libraries applications right no guest operating system right same with container 2 and same with container 3 yeah so as you can see only install the binaries and libraries that are used for that application right if you're installing Python it will only install the binaries and libraries that are required to run a Python because of which your containers are lightweight it can be in some hundreds of MBs or tens of MBs maybe some some image some containers I've seen which are less than 100 MB right? and since it is not having any overhead it can consume less resources less hardware resources yeah and it still solves a purpose that each container is isolated and we can run multiple containers yeah that is the beauty of virtual machines uh, compared to i mean that is the beauty of containers as compared to virtual machines now let's look forward so this is the graphical representation of comparison between uh, virtualization and docker so this is a trend uh, which I've pulled out from Google uh, so as you can see the blue line is that of a virtualization how, how uh, people are interested in the virtualization technology right your uh, be it your ESXi and VMware or, or whatever technology and you can see how the people are gaining interest in the last five years on docker technology docker based virtualization technology okay that this doesn't mean that you have to abolish everything in the virtual environment and move all your uh, all your resources all your infrastructure on docker no everything has its own pros and cons i mean i i'm i'm not saying that docker is going to replace 100% of your virtualization infra no that is not going to happen there are some environments there are some requirements which runs best in docker yeah and that is about 70 percent of your infrastructure you can make use of docker yeah okay let's move to the next one now here here are the various components that i wanted to discuss before we move on to uh, the uh, installation of docker and creating our accounts out there yeah so uh, these are the various components uh, i mean so let's take it uh, this one let's uh, go from top to down yeah you have a registry now registry is hub.docker.com so it has all the images all the images which are certified all the images that are uh, published by individual developers and so on right now these images are pulled down I mean these are all static files yeah now these images are pulled down in a containers so all these images when when it's in a static format it's in a template format it's called as image but as soon as you start using this image or as soon as you run the image it con converts into a container so uh, simply put containers are running version of images yeah and then on a PC you have uh, your uh, container application running right or it could be your uh, laptop uh, or it could be a server uh, or I mean any any um, it's a, it could be in on a data center as well yeah 
because uh, you, you can try it out, test it out on your laptop and push it out to uh, that a particular uh, image to uh, central repository uh, on your local uh, registry uh, or you can push it to uh, registry which is global which is hub.docker.com so uh, in this also there are two components one is the docker client and the another one is your docker daemon now what is the difference between the two so whatever instructions that you're keying in using a CLI it's actually called as docker client now docker client communicates with docker daemon okay to pull or push any of your uh, images or convert those images to a container so that is the activity which is done by a docker daemon so these are the various components of docker right so let's go to the url hub hub dot docker dot com I'll, I'll actually briefly give you the steps how we can um, configure our account uh, I've already co created my account uh, but let's see how we can actually create an account yeah so you have to give a username I, I'll give mine as 369 pro IT you have to give your email address here I'll give mine as 369 pro IT at gmail.com and then you can key in your password uh, whatever you want to give and click on sign up as you can see uh, username already taken email address is already in use uh, this sort of uh, warning I'm getting because uh, I've already created my account but uh, what happens next is once you click on submit it will then send out a mail to your email address for the next step of verification okay uh, so now uh, um, I'll sign in with my account I'll give my ID 369 PRO IT and I give my password yeah so this is your first page how this is how it looks like uh, you can click on repositories where you can create your own repository uh, which you are going to do it at the later stage uh, and also you can actually explore some re repositories which are published by uh, certified uh, docker certified verified publishers official images you can find all these here yeah and we are going to utilize some of them in creating our images so hold on tight um, we're going to do all these sort of great things uh, in the coming lectures yeah okay um, I think we are done for now uh, in the next video we are going to look at how we are going to install docker on windows and linux machines uh, before we actually play with the images yeah okay um, thanks for now keep watching and keep learning until next time